to keep yourself motivated. Now, I know it's really hard starting off, especially for me. I was 140 pounds, 140 pounds in this picture. Emotional damage. What is up guys? Welcome back to Aegis Athletics. In today's video, we're going to be discussing skinny fat. What is skinny fat? Well, skinny fat is when you have almost no muscle and a bunch of layers of fat on top of that. For example, it would be me about two years ago in this picture right here. Now, as you can see, I'm skinny in that picture, but as you can also see, I have no abs, I have no definition, I have no biceps, I have no delts, I have no traps, I have no neck. I don't got to. Come on! Go ahead, keep talking. Um, pretty much everything you can see is just skin and bones and some fat. And realistically, I was about 18% body fat, believe it or not. And that's where the term skinny fat comes from. Now, realistically, that term comes from a lack of exercise over the years and just eating the wrong things and doing the wrong things. Now, most of us, it's hard to avoid, especially if we have desk jobs or if our jobs require us to sit for long periods of time or anything of the like. Now, in this video today, we're going to be going over how to fix that, how I fix that, and how you can hopefully fix that in your own home. The first and foremost rule of going from skinny fat to skinny fit would have to be you have to get off your butt. You have to get off your butt and you have to lift some weight. Now, realistically, like I said, you can do this in the comfort of your own home or garage like where I'm at right now. <laughs> now, all you realistically need is a bench, maybe some dumbbells, the adjustable ones are perfect, but realistically, any weights you can get your hands on, some cheap ones, some hand-me-down ones, some extremely cheap ones on eBay, I don't know, go search dumpsters or something if you have to. But if you don't, get the adjustable ones, they're more than what you'll need to begin your fitness journey. The second rule of thumb when restarting your body into its fitness journey would have to be increase your protein intake. Now I'm sure like most of you, I sat around when I was skinny and I essentially played video games and I was on a computer a lot and my job required me to sit a lot and kind of sit and forget and a lot more computer work, more paperwork, more sitting, more forgetting. Uh, anyways, you guys get the picture. Now make sure while you're doing that you at least increase your protein intake. It might be hard to do but you guys are probably like me in a way that it's hard to eat a lot, it's hard to eat a lot of protein that's why we're kind of skinny in the first place it's kind of why we just have some extra fat because fatty delicious fried foods are delicious <laughs> the best way to do that in my opinion would have to be good old-fashioned protein powder now it doesn't really matter what kind it is as long as it's um, I don't know tasty now regardless of what type of protein it is just make sure you drink it twice a day maybe a 30 or a 20 gram maybe if you can squeeze in a third shaker bottle full of protein a day that would be excellent but make sure you're eating at least 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body fat so if if you're say 110 pounds you're probably looking at around 70 grams or so of protein not that bad if you're 160 uh, pounds you're probably looking at around 135 grams of protein 130 somewhere in there do the math on your own time weigh yourself see where you're at and just try to get some more proteins in your meals and in between your meals now the third thing we're going to discuss is that excess fat on your body and realistically if you are implementing rule number one and rule number two into your new fitness journey it's going to be more than enough to spark your body's metabolism into getting rid of that extra weight and what do i mean by that well, just increasing your protein intake alone is going to stimulate your body's metabolism into burning more fat. Rule number one, along with that, with some exercise, especially for males, you're going to increase the body's testosterone, you're going to increase the body's endorphins, and essentially fat burning chemicals. You're going to utilize that fat that you've stored for your workouts, optionally for some cardio, which we'll talk about in a second. And there you go. Fat basically taken care of. Now, again, you still need to watch your diet. A lot of us probably are like me in this sense that we love junk food. I love junk food. Didn't matter whether it was chocolate cake, donuts, pastries, um, not even sweet related, just junk food in general, deep fried anything. You deep fry anything. I mean, you could literally just deep fry a piece of bread and there I was eating it. Just 
No reason. Stop it. Get some help. Make sure you stay up on your diet and make sure you stay consistent on rules one, two, and three. So on to rule four, cardio or no cardio? Well, it's optional. And because of rule number one and rule number two, it is optional. As you exercise, as you increase your weight that you're lifting, as you increase the amount of time you're able to lift during the week, which I do recommend about two to three days starting off, you're going to be able to increase your time on those days that you're in the gym lifting weight. You're going to be lifting more weight. The fat's just going to start melting off of you as you're on your fitness journey. So is cardio necessary in that sense? Well, no, but I recommend cardio anyways, just for overall health. The reason you're probably clicking on this video is that you've been sitting around for quite a while and uh, gaming and playing Fortnite and Valorant and PUBG or I don't know, whatever the kids play these days, you're probably going to want to do some cardio anyways. Doctor recommended 150 minutes every week can increase your overall health fivefold. Yes, fivefold. And regardless of whether you're overweight, you're underweight, you're skinny fat, you're skinny skinny, exercise and cardiovascular exercise is a key to maintaining good health. So on to number five. Now number five is not really a rule, but it's basically going to be a way to keep yourself motivated. Now, I know it's really hard starting off, especially for me. I was 140 pounds, 140 pounds in this picture. Emotional damage. I'm six foot one, basically, so that just really doesn't look good. Maintaining that motivation is kind of hard, especially when you can go anywhere now on any type of social media and see celebrities that just look outrageously good, outrageously fit, outrageously juiced up. Now, it's not going to take that long for you to start seeing results. I guarantee if you maintain all of the things that I've told you in this video for at least three months, not only is it just going to become a natural habit for you, but you will absolutely see results, especially if you were like me where you didn't maintain any type of exercise for 10 years and you're basically coming back as a newbie. Some muscle memory is there, but from that newbie status, the newbie gains will occur, trust me, and you're going to see results. Your friends will comment, you know, it's really good too to have a really super support system around you at all times. Maybe not all times, but you know what I mean. Motivation is probably the hardest because it ties in with consistency, consistent eating, consistent training, consistently overloading your exercises, consistently pushing harder to try to get to the next goal. It's not easy being cheesy. Regardless, this video is for the skinny dudes out there. The skinny dudes with the beer belly. It is possible to look better, it is possible to get those gains, and it is possible to not be that skinny guy anymore. Trust me, implement the things that I've told you in this video, you will absolutely start to see gains in the near future. And just one more thing before we go guys, I really want to reiterate to not compare yourself to the celebrities that you see on Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat and TikTok and all all those things. You need to be comparing yourself today to the you yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Do not compare yourself to the people on the internet that have been training for 10 years, that have been using PEDs or SARMs or steroids. Not all of them, obviously, but you know what I mean. Don't compare yourself to those people because I guarantee you those are the top 1% of the entire world and it's very unrealistic to be idolizing them and making them your goal. Your goal should just be changing yourself and bettering yourself every single day. Every single exercise, every single meal, every single sleep, you need to be maximizing all of your own potential and not comparing yourself to someone else's. All right, so that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys could pick something out of that that could help you or maybe all of it will help you. And I hope in the end that you can turn yourself from skinny fat to skinny fit. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new. So anyways, guys, I'll see you next time. Peace.